Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial what I want to do is have a look at uh, bringing 3D models uh, before we start actually bringing 3D models into our composite just have a look at working with 3D models in Nuke in general. So I'm starting in Maya because I want to just sort of talk about how we can prepare our model in Maya in order to bring it into Nuke. So this is a model I've downloaded from uh, TurboSquid, okay, and it's an FBX file. And it's kind of a typical model that we that you would have. So it's a model of a chair, okay. Now, first thing you want to do is simple things. So you can or first thing you can prepare is simple layout things. So if I wanted to, I could pull this stool away or put it at a slight angle to make it look a bit natural. So I can kind of lay out or pose my 3D model as I want to. So that's the first thing I want to do. Second thing is that what happens is every object inside of uh, um, uh, our FBX file needs a separate read geo node in order to be able to see it. Now this will make more sense when we actually get into bringing this model into Nuke, okay? But in effect I need to create a separate node to read in every single object in our scene. Now if we look at our scene at the moment, you can see that all this padding here is a separate object and all this pad and these legs here are separate objects as well okay so we've actually got quite a few separate objects so to make our life a bit easier in nuke what we want to do is combine these objects so now the thing to keep in mind is that, that when we bring in a geometry I can only apply one material in nuke to that geometry so the best thing to do is to separate these or combine these based on the materials that they're going to use so for example if I combine this seat padding here okay I put those I can then go uh, mesh combine okay and then that's all now one object and I, and that that all those pads are going to use the same material so that works out perfectly for me next I'm just going to combine these two legs for the same reason again they're going to be both be chrome I'm just going to combine those so now my model is made up of two objects the only other thing I've got in this model to clean up and that's another thing to look for sometimes you have floors uh, uh, as in like a, a floor in there or some uh, extra bit of a set or something in there uh, uh, that's part of the scene that you don't want. Again, I'm just going to delete that because I don't want that. Okay. Next thing is to think about the scale of your model. So you can see here, this model looks quite large and you can see it compared to the grid here. Okay. Now what I want to do is if I just go um, uh, Windows, sorry, let me just find where we are. Uh, uh, we'll go into preferences here. So if I go into my preferences and click on settings, I can see what size I'm working to. So I'm working in centimeters. So each one of those represents a centimeter. Okay. So I'm thinking, yeah, this chair might be a touch big. Possibly, possibly. Um, what I might do is um, if I uh, if I do a bit of parenting here. So they're still separate objects, but I'm going to parent them. Okay. So if I select that, that should select both of them, and then I can kind of scale this down a little bit. So here we go. Just scale this chair down a bit. There we go. Uh, so that should be a better sort of size and, and fit within our scene a little bit better. But that's in centimeters, so that that should be about right. Okay, okay. Uh, in fact, I might just go down a little bit further. There. Okay. And if you want to really check what your scale is, what you can do is you can go into you can just add a measuring tool as well. So here's a measuring tool. Let's grab our distance, and I can just go from here. Ooh, click from there. Right, that's it from there to there so I've just clicked either side of the chair and that's about okay so that's about 50 centimeters so you could actually do probably do with being a bit bigger than that that's probably a little bit too small and um, so actually what I might do is just again just select both these objects or select the legs because the, the, the top of the chair is parented to it uh, and then just scale that up Ooh, hang on. uniformly so I scale all of it Let's try again. There we go. Okay, so we're probably back towards where we actually started anyway. So actually, maybe it was about the right size uh, after all. Okay, so anyway, the important thing is you need to check the scale. Okay, the other thing you might want to do is um, uh, actually uh, 
uh, think about where your um, pivot point is for your objects. So if I click, click on my objects, I can see I've got a pivot point there. And it may be that I want to move the pivot point. Now, because this model is quite large compared to the area that we're working in, uh, what I might want to do is just scale up because it's quite difficult to work with this little manipulator. OK, what I might do is just try and scale up this manipulator a little bit. So all I need to do is go into, again, just go into my preferences, settings, preferences. And I think there is something in here. Yeah, manipulators. And I can just grab my global scale and just make my manipulator a little bit larger to work with. Great. Uh, and then all I need to do then is if I press on my transform one, if I just press insert or hold down D if you've got a Mac that doesn't have an insert key because they're too cheap to give you one um, uh, then you can uh, yeah uh, you can then move the pivot point so then you can get the pivot point in the right position so in terms of preparing the model what you want to do is separate the model into the appropriate objects uh, delete anything you don't need in it pose the model correctly and uh, make sure it's the right scale and, and and make sure that you've got your pivot point in the correct place as well. Oh, again, I might just move this pivot point as well. Uh, now, my only worry about moving this pivot point, in fact, my only worry about moving the pivot point is that I really want the position of, I really want the pivot point of both these models to be in the same place. So actually, I might just undo the moving of that pivot point. Now that I've done that, I might just undo that. Let's have a look. I think, yeah, I'm going to undo that because I I don't want the um, uh, I want I want the pivot point for both models to be the same place, and at the moment they are, so that's perfect for me. Okay. Um, what I could do is, I suppose, if I did move the pivot point, I could snap it to a point or something, or snap it to a a particular point. Uh, in the model, uh, so perhaps I could snap it to there, then they would be in the same position um, and that would work as well. Okay, so we've prepared our model um, and then what we can do is uh, export that and so I'm just going to go File, um, Export Selection, okay, and I'm going to export it as an, XB, uh, uh, as an FBX, I'll just call it New Chair for the moment, okay, and go export selection and so I've just exported that model as an FBX file uh, FBX tends to be the most reliable way of exporting stuff uh, you can export an OBJ file uh, the only problem with um, the, the advantage with an FBX file is it does also include cameras as well uh, now in this instance we're not bothered about the camera but in some instances you might be okay uh, great so we've exported our selection now I'm going to go back to our composite but I'm actually just going to put this for the moment, I was going to make a new comp and just put it into a new comp so we can get an idea of how to work with um, 3D models. Okay, just waiting for my computer to open up a new comp composition for me. Hopefully, it will open up somewhere. Here we go. Fabulous. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create I'm going to read the geometry using a read geo node. Okay, uh, and if I click on the file here. I'm going to go to, uh, was it New Chair? I think that's what I called it. New Chair. Let's open that up. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to put that into my, uh, and then in order to see that, in fact, I'm just going to put that straight into my viewer. Okay. And you can see it's just gone into 3D mode. And I should have, let's have a look. There's my chair. Okay. So it's quite large. Okay. But that's my chair there. So, um, obviously, if I go into 2D mode, uh, I've got nothing in my scene because I haven't actually rendered the chair. So all I can do at the moment is see my chair in 3D. Now, you'll notice that um, uh, I can only see the legs. Now, again, if I click on this, uh, if, I, if I go into the read geo node here, you'll see, as I mentioned earlier, every object inside the scene uh, it, it needs a separate read geo node, okay? And I'll just explain that here. If I go into, um, uh, in fact, so so what's happened here is um, 
me parenting the model has actually caused a slight problem here in that I can't actually access the other part of this model here uh, uh, and view it. So I'm just going to whip back into Maya, okay? Uh, and then what I'll do is I'm going to... Um, uh, I'm just going to call up the window outliner and basically all I'm going to do is just remove the parent okay because it just seems to be causing a problem so middle click just drag it outside uh, so that hang on where are you yeah so there, there we are so now I've got now that they're, they're, they're not parented they're just two separate objects now if I click on that yeah, they're two separate objects so now if I select them both okay and I think the problem was that I didn't have them selected they looked like they were both selected because I'd Previously, I'd selected this, which also selected that. But as far as the export was concerned, I'd only actually had this, these legs selected. So anyway, now I'm going to select both objects and I will do an export again. OK, uh, export selection as an FBX. I'll call it new chair version two. Uh, great. There we go. Uh, and let's go back into Nuke. OK, and then what I'm going to do is just point this node at new chair version 2 open there we go okay uh, so again what I can do is in this model here uh, when I click on node name you'll see that there's two different nodes so so basically each object in our scene is a separate item that I can pick from does that make sense in the regio node so in order to see both objects what I need to actually do is is uh, have in my scene both objects okay now in order to put things together okay so I can easily just duplicate this uh, uh, so that I've got one there you are so I've got one that's showing uh, object 10 arc object 10 okay I'm sure they could have better names uh, and then this one is arc object 14 so they're both showing different things okay and there we are I can see them both because they're both um, on the screen uh, I think uh, I think I can see them both just basically because basically I can see them both due to the fact that I've got them both open as panels in my uh, uh, in my properties window here okay as soon as I close the panels they're not visible okay so they're not actually uh, or if I take it off my viewer, it's not actually visible. Okay, but actually, what I want to do is I want to combine these into a scene. I don't want separate things going into my viewer, and it's not very useful. You know, I need to actually combine them together. So what I need to do is create a scene. So I'm going to go scene, and basically, what a scene does is basically allows me to combine as many 3D elements as I want to create my scene. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to combine this chair. And again, I'm just click this arrow, combine that chair. And now, even with the, so even when I close the properties now, as long as I connect this scene to the viewer, I can see both items. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to be able to actually, um, I want to be able to actually uh, uh, manipulate both of these uh together so when i move one the other one moves because i want them to stay together they're, they're both you know they, I, I want them you know i want the legs to stay where the legs are now if i go into i can move a geometry by using well i can move a geometry in a number of ways i can just select it okay and i think if i'm correct uh it should come up with some handles but i don't think yeah, okay, I can't, I can't. In order to move a geometry, what I need to do is put in a transform geo node, okay? And then what I can do is just connect that object to it. Now, as soon as I connect that object to it, notice I've got this, okay? These handles here, okay? And sorry, I should mention as well, I can move around my scene just like I can move around a Maya scene. So I can zoom in uh, by scrolling the wheel, okay? Or I can hold alt and then use my left mouse button to uh, track, use my middle mouse button to um, dolly in and out, and then use my right right, right mouse button to dolly, to tumble around the view. So it's kind of similar to um, uh, Mayer in that respect. Anyway, so what this transform geo node is, is it does is it gives me some handles, it gives me some axes which I can grab and move my geometry and use it to move my geometry around the scene. Now the only problem I've got is that this is only moving the one item, it's only moving this geometry, okay? Now, 
uh, and I can't connect multiple items to the same transform geo node. It just won't let me do that. Okay, so the way that we can get around this is if I add another transform geo node in here. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want these to work together. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use uh, an axis node and so what this axis node allows me to do is basically I can just plug in as many items as I want into this axis node uh, sorry or I, I can plug in fact it's the other way around I can plug the axis node into as many objects as I want I just grab this axis let's have a look so you can see I can grab the axis arrow here and attach that okay and now what I've got is by clicking on that I've got a single axis with which which controls both transform geos Okay, or transform geo nodes. So that now allows me to move them around together. Okay, great. So I've got it. I've got, and then obviously, sorry, I've somehow I've disconnected these from the scene because uh, I put the transform geo node in there. Again, I just want to connect these back to our scene so they're now in our scene. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to uh, I want to I need to render out this scene so I've got a scene but I need to render it out I can't see anything unless I, I render it out okay so what I'm going to do is um, in me in nuke you've got a renderer okay and it's a scan line renderer so the best way to think of a renderer is it's converting your 3d scene into a 2d image that's the best way to look at it okay that's essentially what it's doing um, so at this point our image is in 3d and then after this point it will be in 2d so i can apply grade nodes merge nodes all the conventional 2d nodes that we use for working with images in the normal way so what i want to do is uh, attach uh, an, an object or a scene so i'm going to attach my object to this scanline renderer and then what i want to do is attach the renderer to our viewer so now when I go into 2d okay now I still can't see anything and the key reason for that is that there's no uh, uh, there's no uh, uh, light in our scene and there's no material on these objects so let's add a light to our scene and um, okay so I'm gonna go back to our 3d view okay so what I'm gonna do is add a spotlight okay and again, I can just put that into our scene here. There we go. Okay. Uh, and you can see our, our spotlight here. I can grab that and, and move that around. You can see it's lighting up our scene now. Okay. In fact, I have just thought of another very good reason why we can't see our, 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 our thing. In order to rotate as well, what I want to do is just press the control button. Okay, and rotate that around like that. There we go. Okay, and then I'll set up a spotlight on our scene. Okay, great. Um, yeah, the other reason I've got a problem is I need a camera with which to view my scene. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, I'm just going to go and create a camera. Okay, there we go and just add that to our scene so now when I'm rendering this scene I'm rendering it from the viewpoint of this camera okay now at the moment this camera is not really looking at anything you can see it's sort of looking from underneath the chair out which isn't going to be very useful to us so what we need to do is grab this camera hopefully I can just uh, move this camera around easily enough there we go that's it So grab this camera sorry just struggling to move around my scene okay so I grab this camera and then now I should be able to render this chair again I'll just give it a sort of slightly more interesting view from the side for us uh, and then I'm going to uh, just rotate it a little bit there we go okay let's have a look so now when I look at my 2d view hopefully it's my scanline renderer here So there's a couple of issues that uh, I've sort of spotted with this scene, okay? Uh, if I go back to my 3D view, um, first thing, my camera is 
actually connect to my scene. I don't want to do that. I want to connect my camera to my renderer. Okay, so I'm rendering from this camera. Um, I can include it in my scene if I want to, uh, but, but essentially, I I I, I need to. Um, but essentially, I, what I need to do is is it needs to connect to the scanline renderer because this this renderer can only render from one camera, so it needs to know what camera it's rendering from. Okay, uh, and I could have multiple. You know, yeah. Uh, and I could connect this to multiple renderers with different cameras if I wanted to render it from different perspectives. Okay, so that I've done that. The other thing I need to do is actually apply a material to the chair. So what I'm going to do is just make a basic material. So this is kind of like a Lambert, really. Okay, and apply that to our chair. And again, I'm just going to do the same for both. Ooh. There we go. Okay. I've also moved the camera in a bit closer. Sometimes Newt can have issues when the camera is a bit too far away. I'll, I'll have a look at that in a moment. Okay, so right now let's go back to our 2D view, and you can see now that uh, we're now rendering our model in 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 um, uh, in our camera view here. And one of the things I can do if I want to be able to see my scene in 3D and 2D at the same time, a good way of doing that is to create a separate viewer. So if I just go and add a viewer. Okay, so I've just basically created an extra viewer node. Okay, and when you do that, it creates this tab up here, and you can just sort of break that off. Uh, and ooh, hang on, that wasn't quite what I wanted it to do. It's kind of disappeared completely. Okay, let's try again. Uh, where are you? So I could break that off into a separate window here. So I've just basically moved it into my other desktop and it kind of created a separate window. And then what I could do is connect that viewer up to my 3D scene. Okay. And then obviously that would allow me to see the whole sort of scene and everything that's in there and manipulate things in 3D. So I can then grab the camera here and then move that and then see the result of that as I work in the scene. So that's one way of being able to create multiple views like you might have in Maya is just to create a separate viewer and then just grab the uh, the tab that it creates and then you can uh, you can work with that. I'm just going to back out of the chair now and just see what we've got. So it seems to be rendering the chair fine from different from different uh, distances. So I don't think that was an issue. I think it was just I hadn't actually connected my materials together. So that was the, that was the problem that I was getting. Anyway, so that is really a basic overview of working with uh, models uh, in 3D inside of Nuke. Okay.